Now batting for the New York Yankees, the shortstop, number two. Welcome back. This is episode 95 of the NYYST podcast presented to you by NYYSportsTalk.com. I'm your host, Christian. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Chris. You, you. And it's that guy, Rye. What up? It's that guy, Rye. Remember when you, LeMayhew, started on the show? <laughs> you had a segment called Ryan on the Farm. Wow. That's how you got Yeah, I do remember that. What happened to that? Yeah, what exactly? Yeah, what, what happened, happened to it? Where's your where's your Ryan on the farm report? So uh, it was Ryan on the farm, he stopped doing that. Then it was stack guy Ryan, and he was like, I don't even bother to bring my well, phone. Well, what's the next thing I could stop doing? I don't know. <laughs> well, he's got his own mic now, pair of headsets. Maybe if I he's, had a nice spinning chair like you guys, like that's a computer coming, don't chair. I, and Matt, now now you just hang now you just tacked on two more months then, before then, you get one. Then, then, Two more months. I always say, like, I liked Ryan better when he sat in the corner. And, like, shared a microphone with us? Yeah, and now, you know, it was like, hey, I'm over here. Pre- like, that's that guy, Pre-recorded his, his here segments. Here we go. <laughs> Let's rip Ryan right in front of him. Well, you'd rather us do it behind your yeah, back? Yeah, I actually would. It makes me, you know, at least I'm by myself when I hear it. Like, all the... But Ryan, we show you enough respect. At least we talk right. trash about you to your face. Right. Okay. All right. No, I respect it. I respect it, guys. Thanks for talking shit about me to my face. <laughs> no problem. Well, you know who Yankee fans were talking a lot of shit about yesterday? Oh, let's see. Hal Steinbrenner, uh, Brian Cashman, uh, Randy Levine. Yeah. Who else? I mean, everyone, right? Everyone uh, sucks. Not exactly. I mean, those are, the, those are the regular culprits, but we had a new one yesterday. Mm, who? And his name is DJ LeMahieu. LeMahieu? LeMahieu. LeMahieu. Le the Yankees signed the second baseman who previously played for the Colorado Rockies to a two-year, uh, twenty-four million dollar contract yesterday, which so. which we do get into in a little more depth. We do have Chris Corelli from SNY TV on here uh, for a little for a little interview. We will get into more detail with it there, but primarily second base, man. I gotta admit, I didn't know that. I did not know that. He has played other positions, but yes, I did look up his his numbers yesterday. He did not play anywhere else besides second base uh, last season, and he is a gold glove defender at second base. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, hey, guys. Guardy. Wait, hold on. He just snuck right in. Are you telling me that we didn't get a DJ? We signed a guy named DJ Lamahill. Wait, so you thought that the Yankees signed a disc jockey, somebody to spin records? Well, for like in the clubhouse? Yeah, I thought we were partying. Booney texted me. He said, "Hey, we just we just got DJ LeMahieu here." I'm like, "Where at, dude? Where's the party, dude?" And I he's been with the Rockies his whole career. As you guys know, I don't study film unless, you know, on a team unless there's a movie motion picture made after him. You know, I only watch Major League 1 and 2 for the Indians, Angels on the Outfield for Anaheim. They don't have a movie for the Colorado Rockies. This is true. That's true. That, so that you is, can't blame me for that. I don't think one's coming anytime soon either. Little big league for the Twinnies, right? Why do you think we're so good against the Twins? Because we watch Little Big League. It's a fair point. It is a fair point. So yeah. did you think that LeMayu was, uh, I mean, isn't Aaron Judge your clubhouse DJ? Well, yeah, I thought we were going to... Or did he get, get fired after the whole postseason New York, New York thing? Right, yeah, we're going to have to keep him away from the boom box for a little bit. That's the, why I thought we got boon, a new... The boom box? The boom... Oh, the bird the, box? The, oh, bird box, too. That's <laughs> that's pretty relevant, too. But no, I thought we had a new DJ, DJ Lamho, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> Turns out it is. Uh, hey, it's not an outfielder. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so you're happy. I'm. Hey, I'm still ecstatic. happy. I'm ecstatic. So you were stalking. Uh, you were stalking yeah. us today, basically. Yeah, a little bit. I was right, outside. Well, uh, you know, it's cold out there, so I had to come in. I saw you had the heater on and the cameras, so I uh, came in here and uh, popped a squat. 
but I gotta go. I gotta head back to the Brett Jet. I got the farm, man. It's crazy this weather we're having. I gotta, I gotta take care of my crops before it gets too cold. All right, Guardy, thanks, buddy. Thanks, All right, guys. guys, take it easy, guys. One month till pitchers and catchers, baby. And then what's gonna happen? Uh, well, I'll probably wait around a little bit, another couple of days, and then I'll report with that. And oh, well, and then after that, guess what I'm gonna do? Once it hits the spring, I'm gonna be playing hard. You know it. All right, thanks, Guardy. And you quote me on that. Bye, guys. Sorry, I had to get that in there. Bye. That was interesting. That was a that was a kind of stalkerish swoop in again. Uh, yeah, Gar. We got a lot. You got to bolt up this window. That window, bro. Yeah, bro. yeah. this is, it's kind of getting New weird. Home. Now. It's getting weird. <laughs> so where were we before we were so uh, DJ Le- pleasantly or rudely interrupted? Uh, Mix of both. Them. Yeah. A pleasant, a, a rude pleasantry. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make up a new word. Uh, DJ LeMahieu. LeMahieu. Primarily second baseman. So what does this mean? Uh, well, guys. I can't. That was my bad guardian person. I can't good, see the Yankees taking this guy and then saying, yeah, you know, why don't you go try third or short or first? Because our infield is so sound defensively right now, we can throw you wherever. No, what I think that is exactly what they're going to do. That? What, play him at different positions? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I believe that to be correct. Really? That he will play different positions this year. What, more importantly, does this finally put an end to Manny Machado coming to the New York Yankees? I really don't think it does. I really don't. I really don't. And here's why. Manny hasn't made up his mind, and clearly not one reporter knows what's going on, right? Oh, nobody does. They could all report whatever they want, but no one knows what's going on. Not one person. Absolutely nobody knows what's going on with Manny Machado. Seriously, didn't the guy who originally reported Manny was going to come to the Yankees, he deactivated his Twitter account? Yeah. No, it's back up. Oh, he reactivated? It's back up. Yeah, he deactivated it. He deactivated and he reactivated it. it. It was just more of a everyone. He wanted everyone to start <laughs> buzz again about it, right? Oh, but man. then someone reported, but this doesn't mean Manny's out, and he was like, "Boom, reactivate." I'm back. <laughs> Told you, back again. <laughs> back in the New York. Group. So, so no, I really, I don't think this spells the end of Manny Machado. Well, how many infielders are they going to have then? Well, I think. I think Cashman coming out and being so confident about Troy Tulowitzki was something he had to do, but he didn't have to do it. He did though. I mean, How? you're it's sign- Troy Tulowitzki. You Come sign on, the bro. guy. You're signing this guy. What are you going to tell him? Hey, if you can stay healthy, you might be the star. No, you're not going to do that. You're uh, going to go out there. You're going to be confident. Well, How old is he? Like 35? It doesn't matter. Dude, you're 35 years old. You haven't played in two years. Uh, I have no confidence that when you hit the field that you'll be able to even jog the first base. But that's not how it works. That's not how you get the most out of your players, which is, goes exactly back to the point of why Sonny Gray can't be on this team. You just don't act that way. I don't know if he made him a pr- – you don't have to promise him anything. You don't have to say, hey, yeah, Tulowitzki, you're gonna be my sharding. You're my sharding. <laughs> He's sharding. That's Tyler That's Wade's Tyler job. Wade, yeah. <laughs> my starting shortstop. Tyler, Tyler Wade sharts during the games and runs into the clubhouse. Tulowitzki, 34, turning 35 in October. What's what's the exact date of birth for Troy October Tulowitzki? 10th. Wow, six days after my birthday. 1984. Yeah, October. Now I'm gonna have to root for him now. Okay, I cool. have to root for him now. Cool. I like that. So he's like he's he's on pace to be your age. He's a year younger. He's a year younger. Yeah. So he's younger. So Troy Tulowitzki's younger than you. Okay. Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh, okay. There's a lot of people in this world that are younger than me, including, uh, including you two idiots. I just don't see the Yankees comfortable with Glaber Torres moving to short. Hmm. I'm going to ask you a really stupid question. But I. What other kinds of questions know what, do you ask? But you know what? Our, this fan base sometimes can be so irrational that I'm sure it's being thought of. Borderline stupid. Is this a backup plan if Cashman wants to go after Kluber or Bauer and they won't get off of Torres that he thinks about getting rid of him? Oh, my God, no. Okay. Just had to ask. Oh, just getting had rid to of hear it Torres? Come, just had to hear it come out of your mouth because you know people are thinking it, right? They want Kluber and Bauer, and they don't seem to believe that Torres is the, is the holdup. So could that be a Who possibility? Who doesn't seem to think that's the holdup? Oh, no one believes that. Everyone thinks that. Kluber and Bauer 
are not on this team because the Indians wanted Andujar and Florial maybe in, in someone else and Cashman said no. Is that a possibility? Sure, but in my mind, there's no way the Indians weren't asking for Torres on uh, that deal. We reported it first. Did that, you? Yeah, we did. That the hang up is Glaber Torres. My sources told me that actually. We, we do have a, a tight Cleveland source. So I, I absolutely can't out of the realm of possibility. Are you going to do it straight up one for one? Because then, yeah, I'd probably. Yeah, maybe. I, I might do it. Maybe. Oh, you don't think that would get it done? You don't think the Indians would take. Not one for one. Oh, no. come on. No. Come on. They're not going to do one. For, Torres for Cleveland. <laughs> oh, you're straight crazy. Up? No, I'm not. You're crazy. They're going to take a bone. You're going to look at it the way Cleveland's going to spin it. You're, we're going to give you a bona fide ace. Didn't this guy win a Cy Young two years ago? Cy Young Award winner? Yeah, but we know. We know the potential in Glaber Torres. Yeah, potential. It's I not love, just potential. I though. love he's shown Torres. It. He's shown but it. But he's had one year in the major leagues where you're, the Indians are going to be like, I'm not taking a rest trade in Glaber Torres oh, man, one I for just, one. Okay, you're so gonna what, have a couple to low, give, lower level prospects on top of it? Probably Florial. No. Yep. Come on. You're out of your mind. You're not going to you're not going to get him for like guys that are throwing to like a 6 year array in like rookie ball. Hmm. You give him you throw in Chance Adams and oh, you yeah. throw in another prospect. Yeah. And then they'll Everybody throw in Chance Kipnis Adams. probably. We don't, what do we need Kipnis for now? You got Just to dump we the got salary on Le LeMahieu. Le <laughs> you got some you got some splits for us on on LeMahieu? Absolutely. What do you want? You want his home road? He splits? won a batting title 2 years ago. 2016, I think. Ah, I didn't know that either. Here are his 2018 Coors Field versus on the road splits. At Coors, he hit 317. A 360 on base percentage and a 433 slug. Away, 229 batting average, so a big drop from 317. 277 on base percentage and a 422 slug, so the slug only dropped a little bit. Okay, yeah, and that's that good. was the big knock on him that all these crybabies were like, oh, he doesn't hit well uh, away from Coors Field. Aaron Judge doesn't hit well, and I will not tolerate Aaron Judge slander given to me on Twitter. You will get blocked immediately. Because I don't want to hear it, but I will also not lie about the guy. He does not hit well away from Yankee Stadium. He doesn't yeah. exist away from Yankee Stadium at some time. So I don't want to hear that DJ LeMayhew sucks and he's a terrible baseball player because he doesn't hit well away from Coors Field because Aaron Judge doesn't hit well away from Yankee Stadium. And in fact, I guarantee you, if you really looked at it, What's a number you want to put at? 90% of Major League Baseball players hit better of course. in their home ballparks? Of course. Mm-hmm. You're, you're training for your home ballpark. Don't 90, would you also put it at ni- 95% of Major League teams, just teams in general in professional sports, play better in their home yes, stadiums, home ballparks, of course. home arenas? And that's why, that's why this whole lefty-righty thing with the Yankees being so lefty-desperate uh, here is a little bit concerning because this ballpark is built for a lefty power bat. That's just how you approach the season. That's how you go into it. You're you're playing half your games in one stadium. You need to be the best at that stadium. And just to put in perspective why you shouldn't really be too concerned with the splits yet, if you look at Judge's splits from 2017, the year he finished second in MVP voting, at Yankee Stadium, 312 batting average, 440 on base percentage, 725 slugging percentage, 33, 33 home runs. 33 on, of his 52 home runs yes. wow. in the Yankee on Stadium. On the road, man. 256 batting average. Which is still respectable it's, compared he, to last year. His road numbers are the modern, typical power hitter in baseball. 256 batting average, 404 on base percentage, a 531 slugging percentage with only 19 home runs, a lot, but compared to 33, that is not as as good, obviously. But you know what's funny? Compared to last year, his road splits were atrocious last year. They made those sound sound like an MVP caliber year compared to what he did last year. I think he bat, batted 220 or something on the road last well, year. You know, Ryan's actually doing his job today. Let, I like that. We'll, uh, we'll let him look that up. I like that. But that I mean, was the end. That was, you got him? No, you keep keep going. Keep going. Oh, now I have his permission to continue to talk on my own podcast. Hey, listen. I got him now. All right, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, he just had to throw that <laughs> slander in there. And All right, so here's at Yankee Stadium last year. Judge batting average 352, on base 471, slugging 699. 99. 99. Let's just talk. Let, let's just let's just talk about how 
crazy that on base percentage is 471 at home. 471 in 56 games. He Jesus played 56 God. at home. Every other plate appearance, basically, he's getting on base. 56 at home. Yeah, 56 at home, 56 on the road. All right, batting average on the road. It was 352 at home, 212 on the road. On base, 471 at home. What did he have, polio on the road? Maybe. Jesus. 471 on base at home, 315 on base on the road. Slugging 373 compared to the 699 he had at Yankee Stadium. That's Eight, putrid. 18 373. home runs. 18 home runs at home. Nine on the road. He look. I'm just gonna read out all of these. And right, real quick. I don't know if you if you started with this, but can't blame it on the injury here. He had the same amount of games at home as he did yes. on the road. 56, 56 in both. Walks. He walked 44 times at home. He walked 32 times on the road. Struck out 65 times at home, 87 times Jesus. on the road. What else do we got here? RBI, 45 at home, 22 on the road. He even stole twice as many bases at home, four compared to two on the road. He's got to he's gotta show up more on the road this year. There's in no fairness, excuses. In fairness, I believe they did play the majority of their games on the road when he came back from... The injury last yes. year, they so were on did, a they were on a huge road road trip. It did it does skew it somewhat. <laughs> it does, but let's be fair. We all love Aaron Judge. We're not gonna we're not gonna take a shot at the guy. No, but he he you need better. You need more consistency out of him Absolutely. when he's on the road. Absolutely, but it's not a big deal to me. Really, in the re- grand scheme of things, it's really not that big of a deal if you're better. At home, you should be better. No, you at home. should be. You just can't disappear on the road. You gotta, you gotta show up. I mean, his numbers in 2017 on the road were still respectable, but then you go into 2018. I mean, he just fell off the face of the earth. Well, what the does road. that say about Sonny Gray? That he's such a weirdo that he has the opposite. It has the opposite effect on him. Yeah. It, you would expect his home road split. If I just showed you splits, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, the three, what did he pitch to, uh, on the road last year? 370 or yeah. something like that, 3-5? Something like, pretty oh, good. wow, those are his Yankee Stadium splits because everybody you know what? Pitches, everybody's better at home. It just goes to the argument that it's not his stuff. It's it's all mental. And I think I think the New York atmosphere is just just weighs on him. I think he feels the pressure. Well, then that should, I mean, that's a good sign to me that the moment doesn't get too big for Aaron Judge. Right. That he's that friggin' good at home. And I think it's what keeps Sonny Gray's value up. I think it's what is helping Cashman to ask for the players that he's asking for and hopefully get some type of return oh, like, he will like be, you expect. I'm telling you, he might be a Cy Young candidate if he goes to Cincinnati because the 87 people that show up to Reds games aren't going to care what he does. And it's going to be perfect for him because he's going to be like, Wow, guys, I'm wow. so good. Ooh, this Nas here, 317 ERA on the road. Oh my god, 698. Oh my, 317. God. Same amount of games too. Oh, well, 317. Home. I mean, we said wow. it. We say it all the time. I, how many? Did we beat this horse to death over and over again. If you would, if you in 2017 when the Yankees signed traded for Sonny Gray, if you would have got a 317 ERA, that's the prototypical number two starter. Sure. You would have been doing cartwheels me? in the street about Are it. Are you kidding me? The big Come thing on. here is the home run difference between home and away. What do you think? It's Ooh. not a lot, but it's a big difference between the two. All right. Tell me how many total home runs. 13 total. 13? Which uh, is 14 pretty, total. That's yeah. pretty low. 10 at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, I'd say 10 11 and 9. at Yankee Stadium, wow. three on the on the road. Wow, he pitched hey. 11 and a third more innings on the road. He also had that big game out of the bullpen against Chicago on the road, and he also he had his walk out. totals are way down on the road too, right? There, uh, he he's had not 30, scared. 35 walks at home, 22 on in 11 the and road. a third more innings. Well, yes, listen, it's all mental, man. That's he's, wild. He's confident in himself on the road. Wild, it really is. So, again, this is a trademark of this show is that we talk about one thing and now we're all over here talking about Sonny Gray. Roundtable, real quick. You don't think so. Do you think that the LeMayu signing is the end? I'm talking to Stat Guy right now. Is the end of Sonny Gray. I'm Sonny Gray. Machado. Machado. Machado to the Yankees. I think it is. Unfortunately, just because they'll have, they have DD coming back later in this season so they they have that extra infielder on the roster he's just not healthy right now i just 
I don't see them spending the money to add Manny Machado but the way the roster is I see it as at this real quick if they sign Adam Adovino right how much would you expect per year nine ten mil okay that plus what they gave LeMahieu does that put them over the luxury tax they're over now they're over they're over yeah. right so it doesn't matter I think that it does this matter was, because there are uh, the further you go right. up, the fur, the worse. But the what I'm saying are. is, I just don't think that this was an end all be all to Manny Machado. I think it was just insurance, and I think it's insurance because maybe they're not confident they're going to land Machado. I don't know, um, but I don't think it takes them out. I don't think they pulled their any type of offer, even though it wasn't a formal one, to Manny Machado off the table. Where are all these guys playing though? That's my whole. But it, but we talked about depth, man. We talked about depth. You have you have a guy like Troy Tulowitzki who I'm so happy they got. But let's be realistic for a second. Can we really expect him to be healthy? Take him off the table. So now you have Andujar is going to play third. You're going to have what? You're going to, now you're going to do the one thing the Yankees didn't want to do, and that's shift Glaber Torres. He's going to play short. So Mayu is going to be at second. And then what happens when Didi comes back? Now you got Tulowitzki on the bench, and now you got to put one of those other guys on the bench to get Didi in the lineup. You know what I really think this And then was? now you want to put Manny. Now you're going to expect them to put Manny Machado on top of that. I don't see it happening now. I think this was a move to put Stanton in left field for most of the season if they don't think Frazier can be healthy, to DH guys like, I'm just calling him DJ because I can't stand his last name, DJ DH, or you can DH Andrew you're not Har. Gonna and, de- you're not DHing LeMayu. He's a sub- why? He's a plus defender. He's but, be- it, but I'm saying if you don't want to keep moving Torres to short, if you put Torres at short, then what? Didi comes back and you're just going to throw him back at second base? It's tough. That's so tough well, to do. You would play third base before we're talking you about, DH'd him. And we're talking Andrew about, would be the, the designated We're hitter. talking about a kid who has played his whole career as a shortstop. And now you have him transitioning to second base and you want his future to be there. You're not just going to throw him all over the infield. I don't see that being the move. Well, may you as DH is not the move either. So, do you, are you confident with him at third base? Uh, I'm, I'm sure he can handle the position. Then that maybe that's the move. I would be more inclined to think that Andujar would be the designated hitter if you're going to take an infielder and DH him. So, maybe this, if this did anything, it showed us the confidence the Yankees have in Frazier's health right now. That he won't be starting on the major league club, or they might have an opening at first base. We again, we we're gonna get, we're gonna but go to the end. Let's go to the interview and let's we'll talk more about that after then. All right, here's Chris Corelli of SNY TV. Chris and Christian of the NYY Sports Talk on here with Chris Corelli of SNY.TV to talk a little Yankees baseball. Chris, how you doing this evening? I'm doing great, guys. How you both been? Pretty good, man. How How's the weather uh, down in North Carolina? Uh, believe it or not, it's quite cold today. Really? Uh, about 40 degrees. Yeah, about 40 or so. Yeah. It's, uh, one of those, slash that in half. One of those little... Slash that in half. That's what we got up here today. Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep the 40. I'll be happy with it. <laughs> All right, so uh, yesterday the Yankees uh, made a maneuver. They they uh, signed DJ LeMayu, which we'll get into in a little bit. But how we're going to start things off here is maybe that means that the Yankees aren't going to sign Manny Machado. Maybe that's the final nail in the Machado coffin to the Bronx. Uh, in your opinion, if the Yankees arrive at George Steinbrenner Field in Tampa in a few weeks without Harper or Manny Machado donning pinstripes. Did the Yankees make a mistake this offseason by not signing either one of those two players? Um, let me just say this. I would have liked to have seen them land one or the other. Um, but I think it's to make it a mistake that they show up to spring training without them is kind of short-sighted because it discounts everything they've done to this point, the potential that there's more to come. I mean, we're just in the middle of January and way. <laughs> Free agency works these days. Things can change pretty quickly, and there's still a lot of uh, a lot of stuff out there yet to possibly be done. So, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's not a huge mistake. It could end up being a mistake, but it's not a huge mistake. Well, I mean, going into the season, it really wasn't the offense that we were too too concerned about. It was more the right. pitching. 
And with what was available to them, do you feel like the Yankees did enough to kind of bolster that rotation to give us a more stable rotation going into 2019? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the Paxton trade. Uh, I think having Hat for a full season, uh, both those make the rotation, you know, it's a, there's an upgrade from 2018. I think there's still some questions with virtually all five of the guys that they plan on starting the season with. Um, but, I, you know, in a way, it, it kind of same with all other teams. You know, I think uh, you can really, if you want to dig deep enough with every rotation, you can find fault with someone in, in one way or another. But uh, I guess I was also on board with Sabathia, you know, resigning at the time. And now I'm a little concerned about his health. I mean, I know he passed his stress test the other day and all that, but um, you know, that was a factor that you really didn't see coming. I guess if anything, you thought maybe, you know, he'd have some knee issues and, and that would be par for the course. But, you know, this is a totally different uh, – <laughs> Health symptom that, uh, so, be, so we you shouldn't know, have expected open heart surgery. You're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's it's you know, <laughs> about you know, listening to him the other day on his own podcast, it was kind of funny. You know, he he said he thought some of the, something like this was going to happen down the line, but maybe not this early in his life. But uh, you know, I overall it's an upgrade, right? I think the rotation was their their focus. Um, they made that pretty apparent by doing you know what they did early on. Um, you know, going after Corbin even in the beginning of the offseason. So I think they knew that that was the route they wanted to take. They settled they settled up pretty quickly. And, you know, it, it is it is definitely better. Um, I just don't know if uh, – and I don't think there's anybody out there that they can snag right now unless they you – know, all of a sudden Corey Kluber becomes available to them, which I don't see happening. You know, I think this is, this is the rotation you're going to start the season with. I, I, I do think that maybe they look for some more depth, you know, towards the – towards the end of the off season um, because I'm not too comfortable with um, relying on some of the minor league guys uh, if they have to for a full season, you know, if, if something did happen to Sebastian and assuming that Sonny Gray is in fact traded. Well, you brought up CC. I just wanted to ask you because I'm of the opinion that the Yankees probably think they only are trying to get through June with CC and then they're going to go out there and make a trade at the trade deadline to, you know, maybe replace them, you know, through the rest of the season. Do you feel that's probably their, their mode of thinking right there? Yeah. I mean, I think that they don't, they never expected to get, you know, more than 140, 150 innings out of them. That's, you know, kind of, that's bonus territory for him. I would suspect at this time, um, they probably are hoping that Jordan Montgomery is going to be somewhere on the periphery, you know, mid season. Um, and if not, then yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if they don't end up with Machado, they're going to have some significant amount of money to be able to spend. I think, if they have to, to add that, that piece you're speaking of uh, at the trade deadline. So that's one of the aspects that I think people have to kind of keep in the back of their heads that they are going to want to spend. They're probably going to need to. Everybody has to uh, come midseason, make a move here or there. And typically those moves cost more payroll. So, you know, um, as much as we can get up in arms about, you know, whether they want to spend or not, um, I, I think you'll see that by the time this – the roster is completed, you know, come February and whatever they tack on, you know, mid-season or during the season, it's going to, you know, be a significant amount of, of, of spend. You know, maybe not what people hope, but, you know, definitely well over the threshold. Chris, you hinted towards it just before, and, I, and I'm in agreement here. The Yankees could give CC 20 clean bills of health for all I care. When you're dealing with someone who had the kind of surgery that he did, I mean, you're asking this guy to go take the ball every fifth day, and, and it's a lot. It's it's wearing on a body. And Cashman talked about possibly keeping Sonny Gray to be that guy that fills in if CeCe's not fully healthy. Do you see that as a reality? Do you think he's still going to get traded at this point, especially after what's been said about him in the offseason? Yeah, I still kind of do. I mean, I it is interesting, though. I mean, like you're saying, the, the back and forth, I think they – probably were pretty gung-ho about getting rid of him. You know, when you come out front as one of your first stances in October is to get rid of a guy, you know, and tell the public that that's what your plan is. I mean, it's kind of hard to go backwards from that. Um, so I think now that CC passed that stress test the other day um, and understanding that things could go backwards for him, I guess, down the road. But um, as soon as that happened, and I'm sure you noticed too, the chatter for Gray picked up again. You know, the Reds are, still interested and, and this team is looking in them and there's still others talking about him. So I think that, uh, I think if I was to guess by the end of this month, he's gone. The other thing to me, I think holding on to Sonny Gray 
uh, into the spring training uh, poses a risk, you know, in that what if he gets hurt? What if he is completely awful in spring? And then his value, if he has any right now, completely plummets. And you're stuck with him and his cash on the payroll. And, you know, that's the thing that they have to, you know, kind of weigh at this point. And uh, so if they really think if they really think CC is good to go, I think that they trade him before the end of the month. So the Yankees last week, they brought back Zach Britton, which I was a big advocate of. Uh, I think even though we didn't see the best of Zach Britton last season, he still pitched really well uh, overall with you know, a sub-3 ERA, working his way back from the Achilles injury. And I think uh, Yankee fans will get to see the true Zach Britton this season. Uh, just what are your thoughts on the Yankees bringing back Zach Britton to you know be a bridge to Roldis Chapman this season? Yeah, I feel like you do. Um, I thought from the outset that, you know, if they were going to bring back uh, Robertson or Britain, and if they had the chance to bring back both, it would have been fine. But I think Britain was the, you know, the number one guy for me. Um, I, I always felt that they needed another strong left-hander to pair with Chapman. Um, you know, I know Stephen Tarpley was, you know, a, a decent uh, lefty out of the pen towards the end of the season, but to rely on somebody like that as your, you know, your lefty setup guy was, probably never in the cards. Um, and, and I do think, like you said, that, you know, Britain getting a full spring training, um, getting up to speed, not being part of a, you know, trade, uh, being fully acclimated to New York and, and the, the clubhouse and all that, I think it's going to go a long way for him this year. Uh, so I think kind of like he, he really did start coming along in September, looked a little bit more like himself, a little bit more often, still inconsistent. But I think, you know, a lot of that has to do with just, you know, basically coming back off a pretty significant injury and just, you know, getting dropped into um, into the field right before the trade deadline, you know. So I think he knew that he had to uh, perform at a high level in order to, one, get traded, right, and be worth, worth something to get out of Baltimore. And then, uh, two, you know, he arrives in New York, and, and again, they put him right out there, and he had to perform. And it took him a little while to get to get up and running. But uh, and he was awesome in September, and I, and I think that, um, you know, I think he's – going to be very strong for them uh, in, in at least the first couple of years of this deal. All right, Chris and Christian here. We're talking with Chris Corelli of SNY.TV. We're just talking about Zach Britton. Uh, also, with this bullpen, you keep hearing uh, the Yankees maybe looking at Adam Adovino. Um <clears throat> they do have to replace David Robertson. Is that something they might do internally? Should the Yankees really try to target and bring in Adovino? And even if they don't, is there enough in this pen – uh, without him, I mean, I think there's nothing to pen without him. I think they can they can figure it out. But at the at the same time, I think I think they probably should go after Adovino if he's still out there and they're still um, he's still within their price range. Um, I think that without Machado, who obviously would have been a huge difference maker on the club, right? Without him, you now shift gears a little bit and you make sure that that bullpen is not just deep, but elite deep, meaning, you know, you've got Chapman, you've got Batances, you've got Britain. If you add Adovino as well and Chad Green, now you've got five upper echelon type relievers versus three or four guys that are, you know, may be able to step up, but you don't really know for sure. Um, so I think that the bullpen has been their strength in the last couple of years, as good as their offense was last year. Um, I, I do think that the one thing that differentiates them from, the other clubs that they'll be contending with, you know, come October uh, is the bullpen. And if they add out of, you know, um, one guy can go down and you're still four pretty darn good guys deep. So I think, I think it's probably a, a good priority for them to focus on if, if they, if they can. Chris, yesterday, Jack Curry reported that the Yankees were close to signing and then ended up signing DJ LeMayu. Um, give me a little bit of your thoughts on that <coughs> signing and, Tell me a little bit about him as a player, as an infielder. It seems like they have expectations for him to play um, multiple positions here, and and if he's done that in his career so far. Uh, well, he's played about. I put this in my post yesterday. I think it was close to ninety five percent of his games that in the major league level have been at second base, um, where he's an elite defender. Um, he's won three Gold Gloves there, uh, and I know Gold Gloves are not the. Uh, defensive metric uh, as they, uh, well, they're becoming more so, but um, he, he also ranks very high in defensive run saves. So he, he's, he meets the eyeball test. He meets the advanced metrics test as far as the second base defender is concerned. 
uh, he's a pretty good contact hitter. Um, you know, so that's something that I think probably uh, piqued their interest. He has some, you know, pretty large splits from Coors Field, um, like most people that play there. Uh, I'm not sure. Obviously, they weren't overly concerned about that. Uh, so we'll have to see, you know, what comes of it as he plays in Yankee Stadium. But, you know, again, you know, he's playing games at Yankee Stadium, Fenway Park, Camden Yards, uh, in Toronto. These are not exactly, you know, tough places to hit in. So, um, you know, maybe he'll he'll benefit from playing some games in the AL East. Um, as far as, like, where he's going to play, you know, I saw that, too, from Curry. And maybe that's the, the thought process going in. Um, to me, you know, if you're going to pay a guy $12 million a year, who's an elite defender at a certain position, I would almost <laughs> want to consider leaving him cemented in that position. Well, now, Chris, that I, bring- Chris, I don't mean to cut you off, but I got to, I got to yep. kind of just back you up there. The Yankees infield right now is very vulnerable and, and there's a lot of question marks as far as defense goes. I, you're right. I just don't really see them bringing this guy in and then just switching it up on him and having him play other positions and see how it works out. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing is, and I know we don't, look, it, it didn't want to move Torres off the of second base. You didn't have to, but, you know, obviously at the same point, you didn't know DD was going to be down. So, you know, there's all these factors that are coming into play. I think that in the long run, um, if it was me, uh, I, I shift Torres over to maybe shortstop and forget about what you told Tulo. You move him to third base if he's even able to stand through spring training. I mean, this is like the biggest wild card you can think of, right? Um, guy who's played 66 games in two years, and we're going to just tell him he's a starting shortstop. I mean, it's, to me, it's a pile of crap. Um, so if he does make it out, why not put him at third base where he could actually maybe stand up tall and not get you know quite as hurt playing a position that is not quite as mobile uh, as short that you know a shortstop would be. And and we know Torres can handle shortstop; it's his natural position. Um, and it's just for half of the season, you know. As you assume Didi comes back healthy, you can then go with whatever you've got, you know, whoever's not hurt, whoever's playing well and you, and you figure it out from there. But to me, um, you know, using a guy who's like as, as good as well, maybe who could be at second base, you know, as a second baseman, okay, we're going to play him at third and maybe he's going to play first. And then that brings up another whole set of issues with the two guys you hope maybe are going to be a platoon at first base. So what happens with them? I, I don't, I don't quite see it. And mostly because I just don't see, uh, to Lewitsky being a huge factor, you know, and that's just, you know, some pessimism in me. Um, but, you know, I would venture to guess most people kind of agree that getting anything out of him will be some, some sort of miracle. Well, Chris, I'll, I'll make it easy for you. Um, what do you <laughs> see being the opening day Yankee infield this year? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Andrew Hart third, Torres at short, Lemayhew at second, and whoever survives the battle between Bird and Voigt at first. Um, that's just a guess, you know, based on what we know today, who's on the roster today and, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. But, uh, I personally don't see, uh, I don't see Tulowitzki making it out of spring training. Well, you said whoever survives the battle, the big battle, the steel cage match between Luke Voigt and Greg Bird. <laughs> it's like Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant in WrestleMania three, right? Who will, in your opinion, who will survive that big battle? between the uh, immortal uh, Greg Bird and the uh, irresistible force that is Luke Voigt? <laughs> well, if we're talking actual WWE matchup, you know, Voigt, I think... Oh, Voigt, Voigt, would, you know, Voigt would kill him. Voigt. <laughs> Voigt. <laughs> Demolishes Bird, uh, right? So, you know, if we're talking literally there, you know, that's that much of a competition. Uh, you know what? I Again, I... I I really, really wanted Greg Bird to do great things last year, and, I, and unfortunately, there's never came to fruition. And not the only not one, Chris. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, and and I and I don't know that I fully trust Luke Voigt, so I think this is a, a total crapshoot. Um, but I would, I would suspect, just based on on history, uh, that that Voigt makes it out of there with the most playing time. Um, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if Bird has a very strong spring training and if he can stay on his feet you know maybe he he makes a, a, a battle of it of sorts but uh i, I don't know in the end i, I guess it's boy and that and it's still to me um when you know when the offseason started i wouldn't have been surprised if they targeted some sort of first baseman and you know got somebody they felt was a little bit more um of a sure thing because i think both these guys are, are, are kind of wild cards well chris and, you- and, and maybe and maybe that's why 
and maybe that's why that they they in the end maybe Andrew Hart does get some reps at first base because they get squat out of these two guys and they just you know deal with it move move him over and and hope he can learn you know first base I don't know it's uh it's it's the one up in the air position for me uh, on on the field Chris you got to assume too and and maybe I'm wrong it's almost like when you're golfing right with someone who's much better than you and they have a handicap and they kind of have an advantage that's kind of how I see Greg Bird going into spring training over Luke Voigt. Just based on the fact that he's a lefty, I feel like he's got to do a lot to really lose that position right now because they they need him. They need him to win that battle at first base, at least going into the season. Yeah, it's a, it's a valid point. I mean, it's why almost you, you got to suspect even if um, even if let's say Voigt is going to be the guy that that's on first that opening day, that that Bird's going to be right behind them, right? If he's healthy, because they need. They need some sort of left hitting, left handed hitting presence. I mean, and it's in the, also the reason why you, you, I guess, at the beginning of the offseason, you kind of hope that, you know, maybe they were going to try to find a spot for Harper and figure it out just because, gosh, I mean, just having that guy, you know, in the middle of that lineup would, would pay massive dividends. Um, and now it's, you know, really a bunch of right handed hitters with, uh, you know, Gardner, I guess, whenever he's in the lineup and, and switch hitting, uh, switch hitting Hicks. So, it's going to be interesting, but yeah, I mean, I, I tend to agree with you. They probably, in their own minds, would love to give Bird, you know, seventy-five percent of the reps if they could. But you know, it really requires him to stand up on his feet. All right, Chris, we'll let you go on this. Uh, we're recording. What is this? January twelfth. Uh, if the Yankees make no other off-season maneuvers, and this is the team they take into. Uh, the season should Yankee fans be optimistic that this team as presently constituted can go to the world series? Uh, yes. I mean, how comfortable and how, uh, confident, you know, maybe 60, 70%. Um, it is a way to look at it. I think a lot of people have said this. I agree. I think Stanton's going to be better this year. Um, I, I don't particularly feel that, um, Sanchez is going to be quite as miserable at the plate um, uh, his defense is what it is. I mean, honestly, it, it can't get much worse. So if it improves even slightly, he'll look great. Uh, you get judged hopefully for a full season. I really think that Severino is going to be, um, this is going to be the year that he puts it together for the entire season. I think you've seen him build in, in steps, basically, you know, he's had his, his downfall. He was demoted. He came back up and he had a great, you know, end of a season. Then he had a great full first half where you thought he was, on track to win a Cy Young and then he fell off. And I think, you know, as each year he's grown and he's learned from his, um, you know, the previous season. And I think that this year is the year that maybe he puts it all together. He's still a pretty young guy, uh, which would make sense, right? That he fully comes into his own at this age and, and kind of leads people to actually finally say, yes, he is the ace of the team. I think Paxton could represent a strong one, you know, one, one, eight type uh, pitcher, you know, uh, again, I know he's got some health issues of his own and uh, from the past, but I think that he's, he's an incredibly good pitcher. And if he is able to get them even, you know, 20 to 30 starts, um, you know, it's going to make a huge difference from what they were able to get, you know, from, uh, I guess from Tanaka, right. Last year. Um, so again, a lot of it, depends on breaks, how the, you know, injuries are and, and so on. And, and, you know, who steps up, uh, who surprises us and comes and, and aids the team. But, uh, you know, they're, they're not a whole heck of a lot different from last year. I, I, I know you said if they didn't make any more moves, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's still one, that one more bullpen piece is added uh, just to strengthen that end. And if they do that, then, you know, I, I'm uncomfortable saying that they would be stiff competition for any of the other top clubs in the American League to get to the World Series. All right, Chris. Well, we want to thank you for spending uh, some time with us here on this Saturday evening talking a little Yankee baseball. Uh, we're getting closer to February 13th, which we can finally actually talk about <clears throat> on-field stuff, things that are actually happening that will you know, matter in between the lines here instead of uh, where's Manny going, where's this going, and, you know... Th- it's been a long off season, but you know we're we're drawing closer to the end of it. So we want to thank you for joining us, and uh, you can follow Chris on Twitter at Chris underscore Corelli. Uh, you can find his uh, work on SNY TV. I did read a really good article that um, your New Year's resolution article, which if fans haven't checked that out yet, they should. It was pretty. It was actually a, a you know a nice lighter read. I'm intrigued. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. So give Chris a little pop on that. I one I like there. that. Cool. 
So, yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> so thanks for joining us, and we'll touch base as the season moves along. Thanks, Chris. All right. Always great, guys. Thanks a lot for having me. All right, so that was our interview with Chris Corelli of SNY.TV. You can follow Chris on Twitter at Chris underscore Corelli. I want to thank Chris for spending part of his Saturday evening with us as we record episode 95 of the NYY Sports Talk podcast. We're almost at 100, which is almost, almost. It's almost. hard to believe that we've, uh, <clears throat> we've put 100 of these in the bank. I mean, Jeez. you can do the math. You know, f- five more weeks will be at 100 unless we do a midweek pod. Which could happen. Crazy things could happen from now and through five weeks from now. Generally speaking, unless something big happens in the middle of the week, we probably won't be doing any right. midweek shows until the season starts. Right, 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 right. So we were getting into it before we cut to the interview. A lot we of would have, we would have derailed yet again. A lot of what we're talking about here... We're not even, it's not that we're not thinking about it or bringing it up. We have no idea what is going to happen with first base. You got Greg Bird, you got Luke Voigt. Now, the Yankees have, I'm sure the Yankees have certain expectations for both of these guys, but we don't know. We don't know if Greg Bird is going to finally figure it out, stay healthy, be a guy that can hit 280 and hit 25 home runs. We don't know if Luke Voigt is just a super jacked up version of Shane Spencer. We don't know any of these things. The Yankees have to find it out. There's one thing that we agreed on throughout this whole process, and it's that the Yankees need to find out. Yes, I was just saying that. They have to find right. out. So how do you find out? You got to you got to play, play. play. Yes. Them. So you were just talking before we cut to the interview about possibly someone moving over to first base. Andrew Har, LeMay, you yeah, somebody. Are you going to do that? Are you comfortable with just taking Andrew Har, who is below average at third base and just sticking him at first? Well, the Corelli brought it up in the interview. I mean, you could see Andrew Har getting reps at first base. I can see it too, but the I thing is I can definitely see it. The thing is if you're going to take time away from him at spring training, to work on his defense, why are you, why are you taking it away from him being a better third baseman? Right. And which, That's, he's which, not a good third baseman right now. If he was already a good third baseman, you were thinking of ways to move guys around the infield, and you wanted to give him reps at first base. Okay, but he needs to be a better third baseman. Right. And here's and here's the issue yet again that I have with Andujar DHing, moving from third. Everyone says, who cares that he's young, right? Who cares? DH him. My thing with Andujar is that if he's your future, if he's the guy you're going with, he's your third baseman. You did not pass on Manny Machado for right. a designated hitter. Right. You didn't. I'm telling you. And I tweeted this out the other day. People, Some people found it funny. Some people agreed with it. Some people just, you know, they were being Twitter idiots. Right. I said there's one. If the Yankees don't sign Manny Machado, there's one person to blame for that. And it's Miguel Andujar. Miguel Andujar is the person you're going to look at and say, not that house cheap or Cashman's a dummy. It's Miguel Andujar. Because the Yankees sat there last season and they saw a guy that raked. He came up here and he raked. Yes. You cannot say he did anything but hit the cover off the ball in 2018. So the Yankees are looking at that and... I don't mean to cut you off, but yeah. I'm got my point going here. The Yankees saw that. They saw how he sought out Adrian Beltre. They saw how he's trying to get better at defense. They, how old is he, Ryan? What is he, not even 25 years old right now? They see his willingness to improve defensively, and they already know the kid can fucking hit. Right. And, and the problem is... You're not going to have him DH, and then mid-season, when, when Stanton needs a day or Judge needs a day or someone like that... Andujar is turning 24 during spring right. training. Okay, there you go. You're not going to have the kid DH, and then you need him at third base and say, hey, buddy, uh, head back out there at third. No, that's going to take away from any progress that that kid has made. You have to stick with him at that point. And I'm telling you right now, If that's their move, if they don't get Andujar, I mean, sorry, if they don't get Machado and Andujar's their move, his ass better be out there every single game in the postseason, assuming they make it. Because that's it. You live and die with him at third base at that point. You can replace him in the seventh inning. Fine. That's fine. But I had a fight with someone just because the Yankees came out and said, yeah, the lefty-righty matchups in game four of the ALDS, that's why. I'm telling you right now, if you're a Yankee fan 
and you think that Miguel Andujar was on the bench because they wanted Neil Walker's lefty bat in the biggest game of the year, you're absolutely out of your mind. You are out out of your mind because if he was defensively sound at third base, Andujar is nowhere near the bench. I'll in that take game. it one step further. If the Yankees had a strikeout pitcher on the mound in Game Four, Miguel Andujar is playing third base. Right. Yeah. You're that right. was a big, big factor in him You're not right. playing. Is that CC pitches to contact? Absolutely. And the Red Sox, the Red Sox are a pretty right-handed heavy team. So what is what does CC pitch? He pitches that cutter inside the righties, which they'll jam and hit right. to third base. And you know that's so, you, so. Let's say Luis Severino was pitching, who you know his game is strikeouts. You would have saw Miguel right. Andujar. I agree. Out at third base. I wanted to bring this up real quick, and I think it's a very good analogy that I brought up on Twitter. You talked about all real quick just now. You talked about the Yankee fans saying house cheap and this and that. Here's a question I want to ask both of you and that I tweeted. Imagine you had a billion dollars to your name. Okay. One billion? One billion. Okay. Okay. All right. You were interested in a house on the market and best offer would get the house. You have an expert go out, you know, air quotes, a scout, go out to that house and appraise it and tell you it's worth $1.2 million, what would your offer be? $900,000. It's best offer gets the house. The house is appraised at 1.2. 1.2. I would come in low. Okay. And I would negotiate. I'll give you $1 million cash if you sign this house over to me right now. Okay. So a little bit of an incentive. Yeah. Why do you have glitter on your nose, by the uh, way? It's, it's got my daughter. Kids, man. She's got glitter all over the house. It's unreal. Right. Glitter Listen. Everywhere. Listen. Okay. But hold on. You guys have a billion dollars. Okay. Why are you app. only offering a million or 900000 You have a billion dollars. Why? Hmm. Because that's the market value of the home. Oh. Because I okay. don't want to overpay for this Just house. because I have a billion dollars, so I'm going to pay $500 million. Oh, so you're telling me that just because Hal Steinbrenner has $4.5 billion in the team or what the team is worth, that he shouldn't just call Manny Machado and offer oh. him... Wait offer him uh, four hundred million for ten years? No, I, uh, I was talking about me, not Hal. Oh, uh, so Hal, it's Hal's money now, so he has it to spend. He should just go spend it. That's part of my point with this whole offer to Manny Machado. And now, say say one of the guys uh, picking the best offer comes back and he goes, "You know what, Christian? You know what, Ryan? I kind of liked you. Someone came in at one point three million. You want to you want to beat that offer?" If you really like the house, you're going to up it, right? And you're going to take it away from them. That is exactly what's happening. It's not about how being cheap. It's about them putting a number, a value on Manny Machado and saying, here's my offer. Which is, if he comes back and says, hey, you can beat it, and then they don't, and it was a number that you think the Yankees should have spent, then fine, call them cheap. But don't sit here and tell me they're cheap because Manny Machado didn't choose to be a Yankee yet. It's the same scenario with uh, Patrick Corbin. The Yankees right. valued him at five years and one hundred million dollars. Right. And the Washington Nationals said, "Yeah, okay, we are going to give him six years at what one sixty? Was yeah. that the final? No, number? it was one forty for six years. Right. And one forty for six. And you know what the Yankees did at that point? They may not. They may not have gotten him, but they upped that. They upped that value to make the Nationals spend stupid money on a guy with a just under a four ERA. That's the whole point to all of this. Hal made it. Hal has, even though it's not a formal offer, there's definitely an offer out there. We wouldn't still be talking about Manny Machado if there wasn't an offer out there. The Yankees have an idea of what they want to spend on Manny Machado. And why would they overspend for a guy when we just talked about Miguel Andujar and how he's improving? Because Didi Gregorius is out for downs. Tulo Tulo has only played 60 games. Come on, people. Just the, think. The bigger argument to me is why they're not in on Bryce Harper. Maybe that happens now, though. Maybe it does. Maybe this is what I Cashman never, was waiting for. I never for. saw a fit for Manny Machado on this team. Even with Didi's injury, I never saw a fit. Right. Because you could bring in a guy like LeMayu, which is what they just did to play mm-hmm. shortstop for a couple of right. months. But the only argument again that I'll have to that is that it's Manny Machado and he's on the free agent market so you gotta have s- some interest there yeah they do have some interest they met with the guy no I know I'm saying that's why there's well, interest well why don't the Yankees have any interest in Manny Machado they took him they tore 
the, had the whole damn thing with the stadium. They took him to friggin' dinner. What do you want him to do? What else do you want him to do? Honestly, I'm not even mad that fans... Want to take him to a hotel at the end of the night? Invite him up for coffee, too? Maybe. Come on. I'm not... They have interest in the friggin' guy. Mad that fans are upset that the Yankees aren't spending. I'm mad that there's so many fans that think that this team just isn't good right now. Or the fans that are like, it's the same team as last year. No. What they did was they took the midseason uh, moves and made them permanent, permanent. Right? That's the first step because those moves were brilliant. Right? Including yes. Voight. The only one that is lateral, if you even want to use that term, is Hap. Zach Britton is not a lateral move because you are not going to get the same Zach Britton that you got. I'm... I may be like how I was so steadfast and adamant about Sonny Gray last season. I might be wrong about this, and you know this could be my Sonny Gray of 2019. Mm. But I'm telling you, shoot or shoot, shoot or shoot, right? Fighters fight, shoot or shoot, and Christian's gonna stake his <laughs> reputation on a shitty pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> Zach Britton is not gonna be the same guy who was still was pretty friggin' good last year. As he was in 2019. He's but not going to be the same guy. But now here's an argument you can make with your whole lateral hap move thing. You're not expecting as much out of Jay Hap this year, and you have him for, for a full year. So now you have a guy who you're really not expecting as much out of. What did you of. expect last year? A two starter, right? No, Honestly, they needed, needed a two starter. Yeah. They, they don't, don't need him. No, right. Exactly. So now we That's have a wrong. guy who has the potential to be a two slotted in beyond that. Probably three or four. And really, the only oh, he's the four starter on the he's only the expectation yeah. you have of Jay Happ this year is give me some quality starts every fifth day, yep. but stay healthy and give me 29, 30 starts. That's it. If Jay ha- if you and if he comes Jay in Happ- and does what he did last year, half season for a full year, forget it. If you need Jay Happ to be the two starter on this team again Issues. this season, there's a big, big, big problem. Right. That means Sevy's garbage. Right. That means Paxton's probably hurt. Mm-hmm. And. Tanaka is probably singing K-pop with his wife. Right. Right. So, really, with the move of James Paxton, it it kind of goes against your theory of a lateral move with Hap. It's not my theory. It's what people are saying. I don't right. think it's a lateral okay. move. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Lateral. I'm lateral. just saying that okay. it's it's a it's a great move, and this isn't the same team as last year. Look, this offseason's not over either. I had somebody it, tell me earlier today that the Yankees signing Paxton, uh, not Paxton, uh, Hap and uh, Britain don't count as, quote, acquisitions because they were on the team last that's year. That's just so idiotic. That is such so an dumb. idiotic way to think. But my point being to all of this is you don't win. You don't build a World Series team in the offseason. You build a team that you feel confident going out there and competing every single day. And when, and when that trade deadline comes, you start to evaluate your team and you see what is needed to take you to the next level. That's exactly what Cashman did last year, and it worked. No, they didn't get as far as they could, but guess what? We lost yet again to the World Series champions last year, mm-hmm. which we did the year before. We came across a better team. Mm-hmm. This team going into this season is arguably one of the best in the, in the middle of the season, we need to evaluate where our holes are, what we need to do to get better, and we need to be that best team going into October. That's yeah, it. Just too many people with the mindset of just too, way too focused on October right now. It's January. We got to take a breath and let the season play out. This isn't going to be the final roster before October. There go, there's right. going to be more moves right. to be made. And Christian, I wanted to bring this up to you. A lot of people are upset about the DJ LeMayu signing because, correct me if I'm wrong, but Marwin Gonzalez is still out there, correct? Yeah, he is. And that's a guy that you mentioned before anyone else that Mm -hmm. would be a great fit to the New York Yankees. Why do you feel that they would go after a guy like DJ instead of Marwin Gonzalez right now? Uh, uh, From what I heard is that... um Marwin Gonzalez is looking for a much longer term contract than LeMayu and is looking to get paid in the 15 to 16 million dollar range. That's crazy. But so they're being cheap is what you're telling me. Sure, I guess if that's how you want to look at it. If that's how you want to look at it. <laughs> hmm. Gonzalez is 29. LeMayu is 30. So I thought there'd be a bigger gap. I mean, look, you, you added another piece to this puzzle. That is a solid ball player, a gold glove second baseman, a guy who won the batting title two years ago. You're just creating more depth. 
You're creating more depth in, on this team. So I ran this poll on Twitter today just for shits and giggles because people are dumb. And I don't mean to take shots at fans, but a lot of them are dumb. A lot of the vocal ones are dumb, yeah. Mm. Most of the vocal ones are. That mm-hmm. the Yankees, quote, didn't do anything this offseason. Right? Right. Yeah, it's one of these right. fake news Twitter narratives, just like the Yankees didn't beat bad teams last year. Which, I mean, I mean, I don't know how you get to 100 wins by not beating bad teams. Right. Okay. Okay, good point. Uh, so I posted this on Twitter. Just keep talking. I think I see a spider on the wall. No, it's a ladybug. It's it. Okay, it started. The, okay, okay. Here, just it leave it. Made then. its way there. I thought it was a spider, dude. I was, I was gonna tell out. you at the freaking end. Freaking out. So I posted this right, and I know that the Yankees can do both, and I, you know, right. put a disclaimer. I don't want to hear that they can do both because you're ignoring the fact of the the uh, the idea of the poll. Right. Okay. Okay. If the Yankees can only do one of these two things, sign Manny Machado or acquire Paxton Happ in Britain, what would you rather the Yankees do? Oh, come on. It's not even a question. Nope. Pitching, pitching, pitching. All right. And uh, I found this out earlier in the week. In order to be considered a scientific poll, the poll needs to have 1,200 respondents. Wow, what's a science? What do you mean by scientific? You know when they poll? say a scientific poll? Yeah, you, you know that's oh, it's scientific, which means that oh, they take it's it's official. It's official now. Like we have a couple official polls. We then. have more than a couple official polls. I like this. So this poll, are we right doctors now, now? We are doctors. We're this poll doctors. now has uh, one thousand fifteen votes, so it's almost. Scientific. It's almost get scientific out and vote, fact. people. Yeah, get out and vote. And right now, I asked, uh, I texted you guys this earlier to give me the results of the poll. What you thought the results of the poll would be? You chose to ignore it. <laughs> Stack guy Rice said, <coughs> "Excuse me, it would be sixty-five percent that they would vote for the pitching." Yes. What do you think? Um, I think mentally sound Yankee Twitter votes more than they do comment on things. I'm going to say seventy-three percent said pitchers 83 percent so far have voted that they would rather acquire the pitching than sign manny machado okay and he and that just goes back to the point of if 20 percent of yankee fans are vocal on twitter five percent of those fans who comment and do stupid things five percent are are sound mentally sound 15 percent are just out of their mind out of their mind trolls Really, I blocked mm-hmm. one guy. He wasn't even being rude. I just he would show up on every single one of my tweets. Just and then I go on his profile, and it's like I say obnoxious things. I'm like, just get away from me. Blocked, blocked. So do you you agree, right? You it's agree that the question. Yankees would nah? If the, this is the better, I would do both personally. I didn't say they shouldn't do both. <laughs> I didn't say that they I'm shouldn't do both. It was just a point you were making. <laughs> it was a point that I was making that. They if made the moves ch- they had to. If you ha- if you are choosing the pitching <clears throat> over Machado, it means that the Yankees have improved the areas of their ball club that needed the most right. improving. Right. Manny Machado is nice. It's a nice thing to have. I think you should do that poll again right before the season starts, uh, like right after all the acquisitions have been made, and then maybe you could add in LeMahieu, and uh, hopefully they get out of Eno too. Because then think of that. I mean, we got Paxton, Britton, Adovino, LeMayhew, and who, uh, who's the other hey, guy I'm missing? Hey, look. That's much better than one Manny Machado. <laughs> if they end this offseason and you tell me they also got Adovino, you can't be any happier with what they did. I think so. I don't think you should be disappointed if they don't do Abs- another thing right in look, the offseason. I'm the I first agree. one to admit it. I've admitted it on here numerous times. I will be disappointed. Not even, I will be upset disappointed if Manny Machado isn't a Yankee just because it's Manny Machado. And there were there were a lot of talks, and I'll be upset. But will I sit here and say the Yankees really dropped the ball or they missed? Absolutely not. They did what they needed to do. Manny Machado was just the icing on the cake. And a, and a, and a cake that's already baked and, and iced, mm-hmm. to be honest. Now I'm hungry. You want cake? Yeah. Uh, maybe we're going to have cake in a little bit. We do have a couple of other things to touch on here. Uh, number one uh, being that the Yankees have settled arbitration cases with everybody except for Luis Severino. The Yankees 
<clears throat> excuse me, and Seve are about eight hundred thousand dollars apart. Now, how many thousand? Eight hundred. I thought you said eight thousand. No. Now here's what the issue is. You know, cheap Yankees Twitter is out there screaming, "How's cheap? He should just pay him his money. He's cheap. What a disgrace!" But the Phillies and the Yankees are both going to arbitration with their young aces. They both offered four point, I think it's four point four, four point five million dollars to Severino and Aaron Nola. Both pitchers camps came in higher. Mm-hmm. They're both going to arbitration. Now, Noel is asking for about a million more than Seve is. But the point is that this is not the Yankees being cheap. Personally, I just give Severino his friggin' money and be done with it. It's $800,000. But here's what fans need to understand. It's not how being cheap. This is a game that the own ownership plays versus the players. It's because they don't want to change what the standards are for arbitration eligible players. That's why both it it would be one thing if the Phillies said, okay, we'll give you five and a half million dollars to Aaron Nola. They didn't. They came in with the same exact number that the Yankees did. And Nola and Severino are both in their first year of arbitration. It's because they don't want to change what the arbitration raises are, what the standard for arbitration eligible players are. So when you see another team do it, it's not the Yankees being cheap. This is a bigger it's a bigger picture thing here. Fans, this is why I don't understand. This is why when people were bitching and complaining that Greg Bird got one point two million dollars, what are you wasting a million dollars on Greg Bird for? <laughs> You're not wasting a million dollars on no. Greg Bird. The guy was arbitration eligible. He got a million dollars, and you're going to pay a guy a million dollars to sit on your bench anyway, whether it's Greg Bird, Joe Smith, Dan Jerkoff, or anybody. And let me ask you this, because we have a very good, re- we'll just say we have a very good relationship to someone who is extremely close to Randy Levine, um, and they told us that there was some bad blood, obviously, between Batances and his people and Randy Levine and, and the Yankees after all that went down do you see that same type of outcome with severino and the yankees and if not then why the yankees are going to try to win the case and severino is going to try to win the case and when you're trying to win a uh, a litigation against somebody how are you going to do that you're going to bring out their faults right so it, it gets, could, get, it could con- get ugly it could get contentious i mean i really hope it wouldn't but, but what else does it do after all that wasn't Batances really back on his game i mean Batances went out there and, and showed the Yankees why he deserved what he felt he deserved. And maybe Severino comes out with the same mindset. I don't know. My whole point in all this, though, is that I'm not expecting everybody to be as die hard and know as much about the Yankees as we do. Not everybody's running a podcast. Not everybody is is doing this 365 days a year. But if you're going to come on social media and make a fool of yourself, have some sort of knowledge to back up what you're saying. And it's not even that. It's just don't be so matter of fact. If you don't have all the knowledge in front of you, don't be so matter of fact with your statements. Come in come in knowing that you might not have all the information in front of you. And it was like uh, when you when we posted the, the news about uh Sevy going to arbitration, but they gave Sonny Grace seven and a half million dollars. Those two things have nothing, nothing to nothing. do with each other. Sonny Gray is in his last year of arbitration. Severino is in his first year of arbitration. So the numbers are already automatically different. Right. And somebody in um, Luis Severino, not a Luisa, in Sonny Gray's position should have gotten a raise to about $9 million. So it just shows you how terrible Sonny Gray was that he's only right. making $7.5 million right. this year. Right. So you can't bring Sonny Gray into this argument about Luis Severino going into arbitration because the $7.5 million that um, Gray got isn't breaking new ground. It's not. What the, If Luis Severino got $5.5 million in arbitration, that now becomes a standard for first-year arbitration-eligible pitchers, and the owners yep. don't want that. Yep. I'm t- it it goes beyond what you people think. That's why when I, we were going off last week about these charts. You look at a chart, you see what you see, and then you react off of it. But you're not reading into what makes the chart say what the chart says. Right. So, yeah, it looks bad on the surface that the Yankees won't give Luis Severino $800,000. But when you, you have to look deeper. Oh, well, why didn't... Uh, 
the Phillies go go beyond four and a half million dollars for Aaron Nola. It's because the organizations are trying to keep the arbitration costs down. You know, in school, when you'd go up to the teacher and be like, "Hey, I know I wasn't here the other day, but can you please not mark it down that I was absent?" What does the teacher say to you? If I do it for you, I gotta do it for everyone else. Yeah, it, it, they set a standard. Exactly. You can't just you can't just do it for Sevy, and then the next time around when another Severino comes up or someone like him. That you're just gonna say no? You got two, what's the first thing they're gonna kids, do? Right? Yeah, that's exactly okay. what I was thinking. Your of, daughter, yeah. you you have a rule: no cookies within an hour How about of this? dinner time. How about right? this? Okay, a, go ahead. A better rule, a, a realistic rule: no eating on the couch. That's a new rule I just put in place: no eating on the couch. Your daughter says, "Okay, daddy, but I want to have a a snack jar or whatever these whatever kids eat while she watches Frozen." Okay. Okay. You're, you're okay. like three years too late, but keep whatever. Going. I'm, I don't have I don't have a daughter, so I don't know what daughters uh, do. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. okay. And okay. you're like, okay. buy oh, my app. Okay. No problem. Okay, daughter, watch Frozen and eat your pudding cup or whatever it is. And then you want to know what happens? Then your son comes in and sees it. Then my asshole uh, two-year-old kid <laughs> comes out to you. Addy, Addy, I want, I want. And then he starts screaming like a maniac. I scream back at him. He gets louder, and now next thing you know, both kids are eating the whatever their their snack like, jar, could, whatever the hell you called it, watching Frozen. And then you, you know like what? A few minutes in, my daughter's like, "Daddy, I haven't liked Frozen in four years. Why am I watching Frozen?" Jack wants to watch Frozen now, and now she wants me to change the channel. Now I'm screwed. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just a mess of a of a father at that point because you broke your rule. Because I broke the rule. Because I didn't hold my ground. I didn't set the standard. So now the Yankees could say, okay, Sevy, we're going to give you $5.5 million, which sets a new standard for arbitration year one players, starting pitchers, ace level pitchers. So, you know, hopefully in three, you know, I don't know, whatever it would be, three, four, five years, the Yankees have the same issue come up where they have an ace level pitcher coming up and they'll be like, oh, we're going to give you $3 million. Three, dude. My numbers Severino are, got five and a half. My numbers are way better than what Severino's were. Yep. And if you don't think that the owners are in collusion with each other, you're silly. Because if the Yankees did it to Severino, then Aaron Nola's like, dude, you got <laughs> Yo, come yep. on. Yep. Yep. Severino just got it. Why am I not getting right? It? And now that set that just changes everything across Major League yep. Baseball. And the owners don't want to do it. So it's not how being cheap. is the owners, in general, want to put more money in their pockets. Yep. But let's just pretend it's Hal's issue. Yep. Last thing we're going to touch on real quick, just want to get your opinion on it uh, before we wrap up this show, is a lot of conjecture is that if John Carl Stanton wasn't a Yankee, that the Yankees would definitely have either Machado or Harper. Do you agree that... One of those guys would definitely, most likely, more likely Harper because of the outfield that they one of them would be here if Stan wasn't here. Um, my quick knee-jerk reaction wanted to be yes, absolutely. But you have to think of it, too. When the Yankees got Giancarlo Stanton, they knew that within a year of the next offseason that those two guys were going to be up and available. Could have easily passed on him. Right. Could have easily passed on him if they were really that set. At this point, it's it, it's not Stanton holding up Machado or Harper. First of all, we will say it again. They're still trying to get Manny Machado. They're just not going to go overboard. Would and they whether, go overboard? If no, they didn't absolutely have not. I think Abs- I, absolutely not. I don't agree with that. I say absolutely not. I think part of the reason why the Yankees are unwilling to go nine, ten years for a player is they already have Stan's contract. Oh, you think it's the years holding up yes, everything? Yes, absolutely. If we're talking years, if you're telling me that the holdup is years and that would be absolutely, then yes. But money-wise, I don't think it changes much for them. I think they got Stanton and they still knew Harper and Machado were going to be available and that they were going to go after which one interest, interested them more. I don't think Stanton is the reason why Machado is not a Yankee. But if you're telling I me that Stanton w- is the reason Harper's not a Yankee, oh yeah, that that could be. But it's not just because of the contract; it's because we have him in the outfield. If 
if Stanton was a third baseman, we'd say the same thing about Machado. If the Yankees could guarantee themselves that John Carl Stan would be opting out, when is it next year or the, or the year after? I think it's a year, I think it's twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. If they could guarantee themselves that Stan would be, a, even if let's say they they traded from last year and he was a free agent at twenty twenty, I also think this changes whether or not they would how many years they would give Machado or Harper. The Yankees don't want to be locked down to multiple and ten year can't. contracts. You can't be. You cannot be. Their choice was. Giancarlo Stanton A because it's Giancarlo Stanton and B because of what they were able to get him for and I'm sick of the narrative that Giancarlo Stanton is a bad player to have I'm sick of it everyone because talks a bad year for him was 38 home runs in 100 right runs sorry badly. sorry he wasn't better for you if you want to fight me on the postseason stuff I'm not going to argue you he does have to be better but this was the guy's first year in the postseason, and it wasn't just his fault that this team didn't win. Stan can opt out after 2020. 2020, yeah. Yeah, so that's two more seasons. Yeah, two more years of him. If they could guarantee that, yeah, maybe they would put 10 years on the table for one of those other guys. Because, again, I say this all the time, fans don't think past tomorrow, Mm -hmm. but the Yankees are looking at it like, you know what? Yeah, Aaron Judge will be 31 years old when he hits free agency, but can we really let him go? Can we really let Aaron Judge no. go? If he has another four or five no. years at the level that he had his first two years, can they really no. let him go? No. So now you've got another guy that you're going to have to pay into his late 30s. It's and now just, you got Stanton, you got Judge, you're going to add Machado on. The, the Yankees went down this route. We didn't listen, like it. When they rebuilt, you, you brought it up last episode about the five-year plan, and I've been using that on social media to fight some of these people. When you have this young talent and you're rebuilding, you need to have that five-year plan. You need to. It's not about, you can't fight me back with, it's about right now. No, that's not what we're arguing here. It is about right now, but right now, the talent you have is talent that anyone else out there would want, and that's rare. So in that instance, you need to think down the road of how you can secure these guys if they pan out to be the superstars that they've shown they can be. And people are saying, oh, well, in five years when Judge and Seve and Sanchez and whoever else are free agents, you won't be paying Chapman, you won't be paying Ellsbury, you won't be paying this one. It's not so much about the money. I guarantee you the Yankees, if they knew they could sign Harper for one year and $50 million and try to go for it all this year and let them walk, they'd probably do it. They don't want to be tied down with long-term contracts. That's how you become inflexible. Right. Because you can't move guys when they're making a ton of money and they're old. Because you, the only way you do that is you do what Seattle does and you trade a stud closer to get Robinson Cano off your team. Right. And you want the Yankees to do that? You want, let's say, Estevan Florio comes up he has a great year. Everybody's looking at the next Mickey Mantle, for Christ's sake. And You're Mickey Mantle, for Christ's sake. What is that supposed to mean? fuck is that supposed to mean? And now they got, I don't know, they got Manny Machado, John Carlos Stan, Aaron Judge, all 30-plus years old, making $35 million a year each. They got to get rid of one of them. The only way you can do that is by attaching Florial to that. You're going to have a heart attack you're gonna, re- you yep. are legit gonna have a heart attack as a Yankee fan if they have to make a maneuver like that. Yep. Or what they're gonna do is pay half the contract, and then you're gonna be like, "Oh, that's just a waste of money." Well, you wanted all these guys five years ago. My last question for you: In your humble opinion, both of you, will I be getting a tattoo on my ass after opening day? What was the bet again? That Ellsbury, Ellsbury has to be on the roster. Twenty-five man uh, has to be in the dugout. I don't know. You're getting uh, tatted. Up, I don't think so. Full sleeve. Can I wait until I see him on the field in Tampa? Fine. I got to see how his bronchitis is acting up. Okay. Is it in remission? Possibly. Highly doubtful. Now you're saying 25-man roster in the dugout. That on opening day. Not on the disabled list. Active roster. He doesn't necessarily... like. They could show up to opening day and he could be like, oh, I have the flu. Right. But he's on the 25-man roster, but he's home, like, eating soup. That counts. That counts. Okay, that absolutely so as long counts. as he's not on the disabled list. He's got to be on the active 25-man roster. Active okay, active roster. roster. Yeah, you're getting a tattoo, The Yankees bro. have to have a hole in their lineup somewhere, bench or on the field, because Ellsbury is on it somewhere. Okay? 
Okay, back real quick back to Stanton because I wanted to bring this point up here before we take it home here. All the cheap Yankees Twitter people that are screaming about how much money they do or don't spend. They're over the luxury tax right now, I believe, with the LeMahieu signing, okay? So they're yeah. over the tax. So your luxury tax champion stuff, you can right. get Throw rid it out of that, the window. Okay, because they, they went past the tax number. They're still trying to sign out of Vino. They're... Rob, I mean, if something makes sense with Machado, they're going to do it. I still, like you said, I don't think it's going to happen, but I could still see it happening. Um, for those people that are like, well, if you didn't get Stanton last year, you could have got Harper or Machado this year. If the news came out that the Yankees had that offer on the table of what they actually gave up for Forget John it. Carl Stanton, and they passed on it, what would have happened? Forget it. Mayhem. Mayhem, but now that he's here, now that they did spend that money, they do have that contract, it's not good enough. So now when you fight and argue people that the Yankees do spend money, look at Giancarlo Stanton, the argument back isn't they didn't spend they don't spend money on him. The argument back is yeah, but he sucks and he's not good enough and he's not the reason. No, it stop flip flopping. Here's the problem. They already had him. They want something different now. And that says a lot about them as people because imagine being married to somebody like that right oh i had you for a year oh wow Ooh, look at you her as good as oh i my. thought when i once i got to know you oh my god look at her now i want her right or him or whatever or him or whatever whatever right imagine being that person yeah because See, i you know I'm look just, these uh, people they they say they're loyal fans and whatever you got to be optimistic i'm not telling you to to Look at this team with rose-colored glasses. I'm telling you to just look at it, put your opinions aside, and tell me. Find me find me a team that is better built top to bottom in every department right now. On paper, because that's all you can look at, because the season has not started. On paper, who is better? Who is stronger in each, each department of the game? Who's stronger? Are we being Yankee homers if we say in the American <clears throat> League the Yankees are the most complete team as of January 12th, are they the most complete team in the American League? Well, let's just do this real quick. We know the Red Sox have, have holes, right, in that bullpen. They have no bullpen. They don't have a bullpen. Um, they have the same question marks in the rotation as any team can have with injury-prone guys and all that stuff, right? Everyone's flipping out about the Yankees didn't get Evaldi, but you can make the same argument as you're making with James Paxton, right? Let's talk about the one team that is um, Vegas has above the Yankees right now, and that's the Houston Astros. Guess what they're missing? A closer. Uh, three-fifths of their rotation. Morton, oh, yeah, Morton. Morton, Keuchel, free agents. They're probably not. They, well, Morton went to Tampa. Keuchel's not coming back. Is McCullers back. out? And McCullers had Tommy John surgery. There you go. So all they have is Garrett Cole and Justin Verlander. Hell of a one-two punch, but you got to have five starters. So, so unless they're going to so can open. you guys? So can you guys find me one team? Well, they have Azuna. Azuna's going to be there for them this mm-hmm. year. Can you guys find me one team that top to bottom can be more confident than the Yankees going in in every department of their of their ball club. As of right now, today? As of right now. No, you can't. Okay. No, honestly. So that's the end of the discussion. That's it. So the Yankees payroll is going to be $214.7 million with the LeMayhew signing. That puts them over the $206 million luxury tax. Now the next level for the luxury tax, remember you were saying... 226 okay is the next level the next threshold where they they would be penalized if they go over that threshold um so they would pay a 32% tax yeah so they they still have about what 12 million dollars to spend right now before What's the they're, penalty for right now? It's not that 20% tax so it would be a projected penalty of 1.74 million dollars. Okay, which is really nothing. No. But they still went over the tax. Everybody was worried about that. They weren't going over the tax this year. They did. Well, they did for you. Okay. Well, there you go. You happy? Nobody's happy. They're probably really pissed off at us because what is this episode running? About an hour 20 right now? Yeah. Who cares? You know? Let's do two hours. Let's Fuck see. If, you want to do, do two it. hours? Yeah. No. And, and you know what? At, at, as much as you frustrate us, I still love that there's passionate fans out there. I still love that. It, it frustrates me to no end. Most of you make no sense. The ones who 
don't think rationally. But you know what? At the end of the day, we want one thing, all of us in total. And that's for the New York Yankees to win a World Series. Whether they're not doing it the way you think they should or the way mentally sound people see them doing it, like us and a lot of others out there. We're who mentally just, sound? Uh, in Yankee land, yes. Bro, if in we're life, mentally sound, in baseball. really, really <laughs> worried about everybody else. But you know what? At the end of the day, we all want them to be in the same place. So I still respect the passion. But guys, I understand that you want them to be this, quote, juggernaut and put on and flex their financial muscles and everything else that I heard and bring in Manny Machado. <clears throat> But to say this team has done nothing, to say this team hasn't spent, it's just simply false. It is. I mean, that's what this team has been doing for 20 years now, right? Going out and signing every big time free agent. Yes, and it's and how many and World Series have they won since 2000? One World Series. So it it didn't work. It works. It, it works every once in a while. You'll get a you know CC, a Burnett, and a Teixeira, and then you'll win a one World Series, but. And I'm sorry, is everyone want? wants to talk about if George was alive, and I've been coming at people hard with your line, Christian, that he's dead. Get over it. Let the man rest in peace. Right. Yeah. But if you want to really take it there, with the way baseball has evolved, with the way the market has evolved, George Steinbrenner would run this team into the friggin' ground. He would. Judge wouldn't be here. Baseball Sevy wouldn't isn't, be here. Isn't, Sanchez would be gone. It's just not the same anymore, especially with the way we've talked about primes changing, where when you're 30 now, you're looked at as almost on the on the decline, whereas 30 was like the prime. That was it. George Steinbrenner would have ran this team into the ground. We would have been doing this over and over and over again when this team was declining after 2009. Look at the 1980s. He went out, he signed Dave Winfield, Ricky Henderson. He had all these big time free agents on here. What did the Yankees ever win in the 80s? One pennant, I think. Two pennant, one pennant. Uh, They went to one World World Series Series. in 1981, I think. That was it. That was it. They always had a high payroll in the 80s, They but they never had any pitching. He traded all his young stars except for Don Mattingly, pretty much, and they never won anything. And then he got suspended because he did whatever the hell he did. The stick stepped in. And stick stepped in, didn't let him trade any of his young guys. Built and, around the core. And then what? And then what? He went out in 2009, picked up some big pieces, which was great. They won a World Series. And then what did we do? We sat on our friggin' hands and, and waited for all this talent to keep producing and they just kept getting worse and worse every year and then they tried to recreate it by giving big contracts to Ellsbury, McCann Beltron and and then it didn't work yeah, they gave Beltron and that, that was it and then like finally Hal woke up and said maybe this isn't how to do it anymore maybe we got to start over and he f- and he gave Cat and homegrown. How many times have I said this is the first year we can start evaluating Brian Cashman uh, for Absolutely. what he truly can do from top to bottom? And he's done a great job so far. Let's win a World Series in 2019. Let's do it. You know what else we can do in 2019? What? Well, we can't do it, but the fans can do it. What the fans that we haven't insulted by calling them dumb or mentally unstable? Yeah, those people don't go out and rate and review. Yes, that's where you're they going. Don't. Yeah, yes. that was where he's going. Yeah. I got you, it. You I guys picked up on it. Uh, rate and review this podcast. Hopefully, you give us five stars. If we, if you're one of the people you feel we called mentally unstable, you're probably only going to yeah, give, give us. But you know one. what? We love you. Give and us you a should review. love us. Yeah, it's we not love that, you. And this is the last thing I'll say here. Uh, you know, somebody called me a sheep today. It's not that I'm a sheep. I don't follow the Yankees. Uh, oh, my God. The Yankees line or their company line. Look, like but, Chris said, we all want the same thing. We want this team to win a World Series. That's it. Bottom line. But I'm not going to be the guy that's going to sit there and complain because I didn't get Manny Machado. No. I'm not going to be the guy that sits there and looks at a chart and doesn't take 10 seconds to understand why it says what it says. If that makes me a sheep, then I'm a fucking sheep. Bah! You got to trust oh, wow, these guys. That was a, bah. That's, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were just saying bye. <laughs> bye! Sheep on helium. You know, wow. so, you know, I'm not the guy that doesn't think Hap Britton and uh, who's the other guy? Paxton, Paxton. and LeMay, LeMay you are doing nothing. You sounded like a Sunny Gray sheep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's going to say when they trade him. So, you know, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm that, then I'm a sheep. But you know what? I leave the, the bitching and complaining in that aspect to everybody else. Yeah, you, yeah. Have to, you have to trust the front office. Trust the process, baby. Trust the process. 
all out. I forgot what I was going to say. So if in, at the end of 2020, if the Yankees haven't made it to a World Series, you have every single right to complain. This is the and first to start year. to get frustrated. This is the first year of when the rebuild was supposed to be done. So, you know, and let's say the Yankees don't want to go into that second uh, penalty phase, mm-hmm. right? Which is fair. You know, then, then CC goes down, you know. They have no flexibility to go get themselves a pitcher at right. the deadline. And then what are you going to do? Right. Oh, but you got Manny Machado now. I, for, yeah. I forgot that he doesn't pitch. Mm. And you know what? We we say it all the time. This window's wide open. And a lot of the moves that the fans wanted the Yankees to make, you know what it does? It it closes that window halfway. Why close the window halfway right now? Mm-hmm. Why do that when it's wide open with good young talent? Why start closing that window? Yeah, do we all expect and want a World Series in 2019? Absolutely. But why start closing the window now? There's no reason. There's really no reason to continue this show because what are we up to now? Oh, jeez, come on, man. It's as long as uh, American Pie 2 now. Wow. You can watch American Pie 2 in the time it takes you to listen to this show, which, you know, unfortunately, American Pie 2 is probably a lot more entertaining. Yes. I want to thank Chris Corelli for coming on and joining us here today. You can follow Chris on Twitter at Chris underscore Corelli. We don't want to thank Guardy for stalking outside our window, but he uh, showed up anyway. Uh, you can follow us watch. on Twitter at NYY Sports Talk for all your Yankees news. Uh, and uh, Stat Guy Rye. Go Yanks. You told me, you did tell me you were going to come up with something oh, different. Yeah. You just, um, just, next episode. Are you going to sign next episode, shit or get off the pot? You either commit to that for the rest of your life or you come up with something. Well, what different. do you want out of me? Like a catchphrase? I don't know. Phrase, you, you have you a whole that. week to figure it out. Go, Deal? Go, Yanks. All right, Chris. Say goodbye. Woo!